Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, fan subbing Japanese anime and bootleg tape trading were concepts that many people took to in order to watch our favourite foreign programs. One of the shows that was often fan subbed into English was Dragon Ball Z, which eventually saw its way onto syndication in the US with the Ocean dub in 1996 by Funimation. Nevertheless, these subtapes were notorious for being a mixed bag in terms of quality and not all of them offered the greatest translations. This was before the advent of simul subs and professional anime streaming services, so audiences simply adapted to these inferior releases and clung on until the superior DVD sets were unveiled. One of the strangest of these Dragon Ball Z fan subs were produced by Anime Labs, which should not be confused with the current Australian official anime service Anime Lab. Most of the material that they had subbed was from the Freezer and Androids era, along with a handful of Cyan and Buark episodes. As well as the Dragon Ball Z television series, the group translated the first Dragon Ball Z movie and Movie 13, along with the Trunks special. The reason for the scattered material is that Anime Labs and other fan subgroups during those days were forced to obtain footage from Japanese sources, whom were taping the show right off the TV. And as a result, they couldn't actually acquire all of Dragon Ball Z at once and only received tapes from random parts of the series. The Anime Labs fan subs have quickly become the most infamous, since they include extremely frequent swear words which didn't even belong in the original show, but the rest of the translations were pretty good. Take this scene here with Vegeta in Dragon Ball Z Movie 13, better known in the Western countries as Wrath of the Dragon. <laughs> Now let's compare the Steve Simmons Funimation translation with the Anime Labs fan subs. Obviously, we can laugh at it and say, yeah, that's pretty funny actually. But still, fan subs, especially ones with rubbish video quality, are illegal and shouldn't be a cheap replacement for the official material. I do not mind profanity in the slightest, but even so, this is excessive and doesn't even belong in the scene. Not only because it isn't accurate to the Japanese dialogue, but also due to the fact that Dragon Ball's humour, badassery, and essentially the show's spirit is not reliant on swear words whatsoever. They took a children's cartoon show and attempted to make it edgy for mature audiences with copious amounts of curse words, but it fails in all regards. I strongly equate this to the old Funimation way of dubbing Dragon Ball, with trying to make it cooler with hard rock Faulkner music and metal songs in the movies. Furthermore, the Anime Lab subs include quite abrasive messages in the opening and closings of their Dragon Ball Z tapes. Hmm, this message here is extremely ironic, right? And what about their thoughts regarding Hank? Who is he? What did Hank do to piss off this fan subbing group? The Dragon Ball community will unfortunately never receive a proper explanation, I guess. Or never care, as these are the most desperate Dragon Ball Z English subs ever encountered and are pretty much irrelevant at this point. However, it is intriguing to look back and observe Dragon Ball's past. Given the two lines of text about Hank, my prediction is that he was an owner of some store that resells bootleg tapes which are first bought from various fan subbing groups. Hank I assume complained about the cursing on these tapes or whatever the issue, and Anime Labs responded by calling him out on this Boo Saga tape. Again, this is merely my theory about who Hank is and his connection to the group, and when asking a friend of the channel, Geeks and 101 about it, he thinks Hank either resold or took their tapes, which is a solid possibility, but the exact reason why Anime Labs dislike Hank remains unspecified. Anyway, this is not the only occurrence of mediocre fan translations, as back in 2015, when the Dragon Ball Super manga was initially serialized, chapters were translated into English and contained identical made up profanity to Anime Labs. Fortunately, we now have Viz with the Dragon Ball Super property, producing solid and accurate official translations for the manga every month, soon after it releases in Japan. In closing, the take home note is to support companies involved in providing the official English releases for Dragon Ball and anime slash manga in general. Consisting of the aforementioned Viz Media, Funimation, Crunchyroll, Anime Lab, Not With VS on the End, Madman, and more. 
I do not condone illegal fan subs whatsoever, and this has simply been a guide through Anime Labs and its history with the Dragon Ball franchise. Thank you for watching.